Hey everybody, Brian Roshetsky here, we're here in downtown Austin, and uh, we're going to charge the car up. We're here at the Charge Point Charging Stations, and today I just wanted to talk a little bit more about Charge Point stock. Uh, I've been buying Charge Point stock now for, man, I almost forget how long I've been buying it, but I uh, uh, started buying Charge Point stock right when it hit, right when the merger hit. It uh, got up to about 50 bucks a share. Dropped down to about twenty dollars a share. Been buying it at about nineteen to twenty dollars a share, and we have recently seen a rise in Charge Point stock. Um, and that rise has now been going up steadily for about a month. This is here in Austin, Texas. This I'm gonna I'm gonna go start my car in a second. We'll see how well Charge Point has come along on seamless integration charging. We have what looks to be two, four, we'll have six, eight charge point chargers right here in Austin, Texas. And this entire street is dedicated to all electric charging. This is um, Electric Drive or Electric Avenue here in Austin, Texas. And so I'm up to about 100 shares of charge point stock. If any of you guys out there have been buying charge point stock, let me know how many shares you have um, because I, I'd like to see where we think this is going to go. If charge point gets any type of specific, you know, integration into any other vehicles, uh, whether it be or like in any other businesses, whether it be like Whole Foods, uh, we, we're going to see a rise in charge point stock. This is definitely going to be something that's going to pop, I think. Um, in you know, in the coming months, hopefully, and we, we don't know, we never know, but that's what we're hoping for. So here we go. Oh wait, maybe I got to plug it in first. All right. Plugged her in. Let's give it a shot. Go away. Maybe I gotta go like that. Well, maybe it's the uh, the app. Normally it just starts. Come on, charge point. Waiting for EV. And there it goes. Charging up. 100%. Pretty much integrate. Pretty much integrated. Pretty much. Pretty, pretty good. Now, if Tesla opens up their networks um, to other charging, I, I think that could, uh, could change things, but I, I think that's so far out. I think that's insanely far out. And I, I think if there is gonna be any company, it's gonna be ChargePoint that's gonna succeed. No other companies have, look at this. No other charging stations are like this. They're all BS. These are the nicest charging stations outside of Tesla. And that's why I think that charge point stock was an insane buy at 19 bucks. Now we're, we've been running a little ramp on a charge point stock. I think it's about up to about uh, 35, 30 to 35 bucks right now. Um, I've seen multiple other people talk about charge point could be going up to about a hundred. I've seen someone speculate in the future. It could be at a thousand. I don't believe that necessarily, but I do want to say, I mean, anything could happen because right now, I mean, we're looking at such a small market base that charge points holding the expansion and the growth is going to be insane. So, so that's really it. Just uh, let me know down in the comments if anybody uh, has charge point stock, if anybody's uh, buying charge point stock or thinking about charge point stock. Uh, let me know what you think. Hey, how you doing, man? Amigo Brian. Uh, solo mandarte un saludo. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, my magnet. Found my magnet. I did a couple Uber rides today. Gave uh, someone a ride out to the zoo. 29%. How you doing, Jose? Not too equipped with Spanish there, buddy. I try. You can hear water cooling. Let's see what the charge is. Actually, this one's the one near the water. That's weird. This is this one's not charging, but this one's this one's the one cooling, huh? Wonder if it goes through this first or something. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can barely see it. Uh, so far, I've added and I've gotten. I'm currently charging at 52.5 kilowatt hours. Completely BS compared to a Tesla. I know but completely futuristic to that car, 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 the Jeep, the van, the Hummer, or whatever that thing is, the Range Rover, that car, 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 and that car, and that car. Did see an Audi Audi e-tron today. That was pretty sweet. I wonder how long it'll be before these suckers open. Not like we really need them right now, but my my wonder is is if we technically didn't need these right now, charge points expanding. What does charge point know? Does charge point know that we're about to he see a push? You know, do we do they know that there's going to be a push in uh, that we are going to need these? That's the question. If charge points preparing. Maybe they, I mean, they're, they're, the stock's definitely doubled over the past few months. I feel we're going to see another doubling in here in a couple couple months. I'm up to 102 shares of ChargePoint stock. I think my average buy-in is about 29. See where we're at. Forty-three, forty-four. Almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the AC on. Six. He gathered Rio Grande Valley leaders in Brownsville's El Jardín Hotel to make his pitch for an Oceanside Highway that would run from Corpus Christi. It would become, in his words, the most beautiful 150 miles of highway in the world. Robertson laid out his vision before the Rio Grande Valley Commercial Club. I have traveled somewhat extensively in this world, he said, and have never seen any scenery wilder or more beautiful than this stretch of beach. Robertson was not only an entrepreneur, he was a decorated soldier and noted engineer. In 1915, he served as a scout for General Jack Pershing in the pursuit of Pancho Villa in Mexico. During World War I, he served in Europe as a commander of the 22nd Engineers, building railroads and bridges for the Allied troops in France. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal for bravery under fire. The business leaders of the valley trusted his vision because they believed his claims. He wasn't pitching a blacktop road. The beach is as smooth as a billiard table, Robertson said. No road can be constructed by man 
as good talk about Boca Chica area as the beach and the Gulf of Mexico maintains it. All you would need is maintenance crews to move driftwood out of the way, he said, telling those assembled that he had explored the beach from Corpus Christi to the mouth of the Rio Grande River and that a highway was quite possible and would bring in enormous numbers of tourists. Just throw across the bay bridges at either end, he suggested, and you'd be open for business. Such a development would be good for the Rio Grande Valley too, he argued. With good roads to Boca Chica Beach, Valleyites could have a Sunday lunch at home, then drive to the beach for a Sunday afternoon swim at the beach, and still be home by 10 p.m. Robertson's Oceanside Highway was never built. All right, we're almost ready. Now, I want to let you guys know I'm going to be trying to get some more videos going. I'm going to get, uh, I want to do a video on how Shutterstock and stock photography has led me to passive income and investments into Tesla and stocks. Uh, I'm going to get a couple more videos maybe going as well. And then I should be back down at Giga Texas here maybe uh, tomorrow. I think I'll be back at Giga Texas tomorrow. We'll see. Um, just want to tell everyone thanks, and we'll see you next time. Got to get this uh, charge going. Peace.